This is day number 29 on the trail. We, uh, it's almost 11 o'clock, so we're getting a, a very late start, probably the latest start we've ever had on the trail, but uh, it was such a nice, this is probably the nicest campsite we've ever had. I mean, literally soft beach sand and stream running right through there where we could get water and actually did a little bit of laundry, or actually stood in there and washed myself off too, got the sweat off, so that was nice. But uh, we're going to be heading up that way now, that way, towards the mountains, if you can see the snow in the background. Start gaining elevation pretty soon, so these nice warm days laying on the beach will be a thing of the past here in a short time. Later today, we're probably going to be running into, what's the name of the, Mission Creek. thank you, Mission Creek, my atlas over here because I can't remember a damn thing, um, Mission Creek, which last year was very badly washed out by a spring storm, so the, the trail for several miles is completely eradicated. We're going to have to kind of cross country bushwhack it, I guess. Just keep on this rock right in the trail full of all these little holes here and obviously man-made holes but uh, for what purpose I cannot even begin to guess but uh, here's some scale that's the handle of my uh, trekking pole anyway anybody has any idea why a random rock in the middle of the nowhere would have all these holes in it that are apparent, obviously man-made holes, please let me know.
sun just set you can see yeah I guess it's yeah over my shoulder but uh, right now it's almost seven o'clock and Thea is about an hour ahead of me headed for our campsite for the night which is still two and a half miles away so I am definitely gonna be walking at least part of that in the dark with a headlamp but the reason for the delay was uh, it's been almost two days since I had a cell phone signal and I had videos that I wanted to get uploaded before they got to uh, I, I, I try to keep them regular I don't want to have big gaps in my uh, my video because you know people family and friends mostly but hopefully some of you other people that are just watching them for fun look forward to them so I feel an obligation to try and keep them out there on a regular basis so anyway long story short I finally got up to a place where I had a weak cell phone signal problem is that uh, it's a pretty slow way to do it I sat there for over two and a half hours trying to upload a 15 minute video just got done and now I'm racing against time or racing against dark I guess I should say to try to get uh, down to my destination so anyway it's uh, cooling off quick which I suppose I should be grateful for because it reduces the chances of me stepping on a rattlesnake in the dark okay I walk past the sandy area here and you see somebody scratched the name the family in it of course I know who that is that's the young couple with the little baby we saw yesterday and right on the other side of it we have Goldilocks that being of course my wife Thea and uh, there were a few other trail texts a little bit further down where I scratched my name roadkill into it but uh, for uh, somebody who, who, uh, who may not understand what's going on here, it's common for hikers, especially hikers that typically hike together in groups, but maybe they're separated by a couple hours or even a day or so for some reason. A lot of times they'll just scratch their name in the sand with a, a direction arrow showing where they went or uh, a date and time showing when they passed by so that other people who may be wanting to link up with them know uh, where they are how far ahead they are you see here somebody they put an arrow in the dirt for some reason i guess because the trail is kind of confusing but they want you to know which way to go so you don't get off trail so uh anyway it's kind of cool it's, uh, especially out here where cell phone access is so spotty a lot, a lot of times you can go days at a time without uh, any way to get in contact with anybody so the hikers get imaginative and just scratch that information in the ground okay today is day number 30 and we just uh, got done packing up our camp but today's going to be a different kind of challenge for us we're heading up this steep river drainage here and this is one that last year they had a huge huge flood and it washed out Oh, I guess several miles of the trail. I'm not sure how much altogether. So basically it's just sort of bushwhacking, rock scrambling, and blindly stumbling in what you hope is the right direction to get where you want to go. Um, so other than that, everything was going well. Uh, last night was the first night in quite a long time we actually shared a campsite with some other people. Um, we came in late, actually after dark. But uh, Wooly was already here with his camp set up, as was um, the family, uh, Micah, Joe, and their baby, Solel. So, uh, but as usual, they've all packed up and taken off, and Thea and I are, are some Goldilocks, and I are the last ones to leave camp. So, we need to get going, because we have a long way to go. I'm pretty surprised to hear myself saying this, but, because usually I'm, I'm cursing the wind, but... It's kind of a warm day, but thankfully we've got a relatively light breeze, which I guess because we're close to the mountains has a little bit of a cool flavor to it. So 
It's actually making it to be a pretty tolerable day to hike despite the hot sun. Finally, I'm kind of proud to say that I gave someone their trail name. Uh, Joe of the family is now Sacagawea. So a refresher for some of you who may not be up on your Old West history. Sacagawea was the female Indian guide uh, and interpreter on the uh, Lewis and Clark expedition. But she did so while packing a newborn baby. If you have a Sacagawea gold dollar stuck away in a drawer somewhere, pull it out and look at it and you'll see it shows a picture of her or an image of her with the baby on her back. So anyway, Joe, who it turns out is, uh, I think she said 116th Cherokee, thought it was a, a flattering trail name. So from here on out, that's what she's gonna go by. completely washed out so I'm walking <laughs> right up the middle of the stream. Um, you see a sheer of boulders on one side and over here on this side really rocky hard so ironically the stream's the easiest way to go. Okay here's the trail or is it the trail? Maybe this, maybe this is the trail. Let's go look and see. Uh, well, there's the stream. Where? Over there somewhere. Oh, hey, cool. Some other hikers put a little, a little cairn to mark where the trail goes. Otherwise, you're screwed trying to navigate through here. Okay, got across the creek, and where are we going? Up this rock wall. Ah, there's a cairn right there. Stack of rocks. So let's go around this thing. Oh, that wasn't easy to do with the camera in my hand. Uh, okay, now I'm up on top, and once again, which way is the trail? Uh, let's go this way because. That's the only choice. Okay. Anybody see anything that looks like a trail? Not me. Oh well. Well, we'll fail. Just follow the river. The adventure continues. Back by the stream. Okay, so obviously can't keep going straight. So, across the stream, the trail must be over there. Whoops. Ah. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is it any wonder we're only making an average of one mile per hour through this section? Okay, so we are, at least for the time being, back on trail. You can see that we actually have a trail in front of us. We've gained some 
altitude, you've gone over a hill away from the river, although it looks like you may be swinging back towards it. So, this is, uh, I don't think we've had a day on trail yet where we have worked so hard, put out so much energy for so little gain. Uh, as I said, we're gaining, I think, less than a mile per hour. So, it's going to be damn tired when we get to camp tonight. Our Mission Creek nightmare continues. The, uh, there's no sign of a trail anywhere in here. It's literally just trying to pick the route with the fewest obstacles, fewest boulders, fewest trees, and continuing to head up the canyon. So, I mean, you can't get lost. That canyon on that side, and you can't really see the one on the other side, but it's equally as steep. So, all you can do is walk up the canyon and hope that eventually you'll find a place where the trail is not washed out and you can walk at a reasonable pace. We just stopped to take a break after killing ourselves in Mission Creek here. Sat down next to this tree and realized it has no bark on it anywhere, even all the way up to the very top. It's really, really strange. I have no idea what kind of a tree it is, not being a tree expert type of guy. Theo was just laughing at my feet, saying they look like they belong on two different bodies. Yeah, I, I guess I can kind of, I can kind of see her point. They're uh, definitely two-toned feet and legs. So I'm not sure how much of that's tan and how much of it's dirt and God knows what else. All right, well, this is the end of day number 30. Um, Boy, it was uh, both a combination of probably our toughest day and our shortest, <laughs> shortest mileage day. I think we did six miles. Does that sound right? Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe six miles. But uh, the Mission Creek obstacle course was something that uh, it has to be experienced to, uh, to appreciate just how tough it was. Anyway, luckily, uh, we survived and tent is all pitched and ready and Thea has made uh, what's in here? Hawaiian beans and spam. Hawaiian beans and spam. So it uh, it actually <laughs> it tastes a lot yummier than it sounds <laughs> but uh, we had it once before and it was delicious but it woke us up in the middle of the night <laughs> if you know what I mean. So got a lot of fiber. <laughs> Anyway, good night. Um, tomorrow, day 31, is a steep climb all the way. I think right now we're at about 4,000 feet, and we're going to go up over 8,500 feet before we drop down into Big Bear. So, you need a good night's sleep. <laughs>